Oh, hello. 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 Welcome to Snarl's Halloween miniseries, Megan's Monsters. Today we're going to be entering into the world of the psychological Australian thriller, The Babadook. Because this monster represents the guilt that we carry and the darkness that we're all capable of, which is the scariest thing of all. And one characteristic of this monster is that you cannot get rid of it. It is always there once you let it inside. So this movie does a good job at recognizing it, fighting it, and then locking it in a basement and feeding it worms. Let's find that monster in me and let's turn into the Babadook. If it's in a word or if it's in a book, you can't get rid of the Babadook. A rumbling sound, then three sharp knocks. Ba, 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 duk. You'll see him if you look. All right, so while I transform myself into this monster that symbolizes so much, let's get deep and chat about this movie. The Babadook is possibly the most chilling, thoughtful, and moving horror story I know. It's full of symbolism for dealing with our emotions, and it's directed by a woman, so this movie is right up my alley. Originally a short psychological horror called Monster, The Babadook was adapted into its feature-length form in 2014 by Jennifer Kent as her directorial debut. In a genre that men typically dominate, Kent not only addresses that women can write and direct horror well, but also confronts some everyday issues that many women face, such as motherhood, raising a child as a widow, and the emotional distress of rage and loss that comes along with all of that. This film is not about the paranormal or just a boogeyman in the closet, but about the darkness in all of our hearts, particularly stemmed from grief. The film follows the relationship of Amelia, a young, sad, single mother, and her misbehaving son, Sam, who was born the same day that his dad tragically died in a car crash when driving Amelia to the hospital to give birth to him. The dreadful clash of unconditional love for her son and the everlasting grief he represents as well really starts to wear on Amelia as the boy begins to get older and continues misbehaving and becoming violent. Definitely sounding violent, this child can scream. This behavior eventually isolates Sam and Amelia from the external family support system that they had, especially after Sam pushes his cousin out of a treehouse, but she was bullying him, so. The Babadook is introduced to them in a pop-up storybook that Sam asks his mother to read to him. It describes the Babadook, a tall, pale-faced, scary dude in a top hat with pointed fingers who tortures its victims after they become aware of it. So metaphorically, the monster kind of acts as an object for Amelia to place all of her terrors and suppressed feelings on. Because in a way, it's almost easier to battle an external monster than to look inward and fix the horror of grief and guilt. And it acts as this between point for Amelia's split feelings for her son. So so she can hate the pain and grief that he represents, but continue loving him. Amelia slowly becomes more possessed by the Babadook, getting a little bit more violent and doing things that I don't really want to talk about, but I will say she kills a dog. The darkness absorbs Amelia entirely, and the Babadook that she is possessed with attempts to kill Sam. But the monster is finally partially beaten when she begins strangling her son, and he touches her face to tell her that he loves her, bringing her back through his love. Oof, this scene is chilling and just covers you in goosebumps and feelings. She's released from the Babadook's position, but just like the story says, you cannot get rid of the Babadook. So she keeps him in her basement along with her husband's possessions and continues to go down and feed it worms. So symbolic that we all have a basement of darkness, bad memories, guilt, and trauma. It's forever a part of us, something that can be recognized, but we can't ever let it consume us entirely. Okay, we got deep. On a lighter note, if you go on the internet, you may have noticed that the Babadook is in a lot of photos with rainbows, and sometimes even Pennywise, the dancing clown from It. After a specific screenshot went viral of the Babadook being featured in Netflix's LGBTQ category, the internet has this big conspiracy that the Babadook is gay and in a very loving relationship with Pennywise. So there you have it. If you own black and white face paint, a top hat, and black coke of some sort, you too can be a spooky gay tap dancing giant metaphor for our grief this Halloween. exploring the Babadook monster with me. Tap that like button, leave us a comment down below. What's your favorite monster? Please subscribe to Snarl, check out our other videos. And remember, if it's in a word or it's in a book,